Hello everybody and welcome to a tutorial on modules with Python. So in order to do Python with the web, we have to incorporate modules, or at least we are going to incorporate modules because it will save us a lot of time. So in this tutorial, we're just going to talk about what are modules, how to install them, how to use them, and how to learn more about them. So first of all, one of the main principles of Python is this DRY or don't repeat yourself. So this also extends to don't repeat others. So as such, for many common tasks, fields, environments, whatever, someone has already created code that's gonna help you do just common tasks for that specific subject, let's say. And this code that is all put together, like someone's gonna write themselves some code, and then usually after writing themselves some code, they realize, hey, this would be really cool to share with people, so they put it together, and they call it a module. So people package these modules and allow them to and allow you to download them and use them in your own work. So the vast majority of modules are completely open source and then they're going to be licensed under a pretty unrestrictive or non-restrictive license like GPL or MIT. But it's definitely in your best interest to go ahead and make sure you understand the licensing that any module is under that you happen to use because some are not under such a unrestrictive license. Some modules are kind of restrictive, especially if you're planning to operate in a closed source or commercial setting. So anyways, how do we get modules? So if you Google this question, you're gonna get a ton of answers and they're going to vary a lot. And this is really annoying. I would say getting modules is probably one of the biggest hurdles for people initially. So we definitely want to cover that, talk about what the norm is today. So right now, almost all modules or all major modules, certainly all the ones that we're going to be using in this series, I believe, should be able to be installed with pip. Now in the past, pip was really not included in installations of Python. It was just a method you could use to install packages, but not everybody used pip. A lot of people did set up .py, or maybe they got binaries. And there were all kinds of other ways that you could install packages. So that was kind of a problem because everybody was doing something a little different. And then to package a module, you needed to handle for all the various methods people might use to package a module. But nowadays, pretty much everybody is using pip. And pip comes with Python by default. So if it's not with your Python now, you should update your Python and you will have pip. So for example, to install a package like say NumPy, which is a package for crunching numbers and doing all kinds of math and stuff, you would open up either your command prompt, so that would be cmd.exe or bash or whatever shell or terminal, you would open that. So obviously that would be you know a bash on Apple or cmd.exe for Windows or your terminal on Linux, and you would just type pip install NumPy, okay? And so for some people, when they open that up, and in fact, let me go ahead and open it just to show you, just in case you're still not following. So when you have this open, uh, you can go something simple as pip install, and then whatever the module is, and that's it. Now, for some of you, you might get an error that says pip is not a recognized command. Now, this kind of gets us out of the topic of Python and into the topic of computers, but it's important to know your computer doesn't understand what every single possible command you might throw at it would actually be, right? It only knows some of them. And so you have basically two options you know, when you're told that, hey, this isn't a recognized command or it's not in your path or whatever. You can either add it to what is called your path or you can just simply reference the program completely. So, for example, when we say pip install a module, pip is a program, right? We're telling pip is a program, install is an argument that we're feeding that program, and then module is an another argument that we're feeding to that program. Same token, when we call Python, it isn't because my command prompt knows what Python is. It doesn't naturally know Python. It just Python is in my path, but Python is a program and it is not necessarily in your path. So if you get that error, basically what it means is it's just not in your path. So like I said, there's two methods to solve that. The first is adding it to your path, but adding it to your path is gonna be different for everyone. I'll show you what it's like on Windows, but it's not necessarily gonna be the same across all operating systems. 
Now, at least on Windows, you can open up your control panel and then you would go to system and security and then system again. And we're looking for maybe advanced system settings, I think. Let's open that up. Yes. And then in here, you have environment variables. So you would click on that. And then here we have path. And so you would edit this path to contain the path to the program that you're hoping to be able to use at some point. Okay, so you can see for me, I have something in my path. Let me get it nice like this. C colon slash Python 34. That is the path to the Python executable, and that's why I get to use it. But if you don't have this in your path, it's not going to know. So you put these things in your path, like cmd.exe is doing, is it goes to all of these variables, and it just tries every single one of the paths that you have in here. And if it finds one, great, it's going to use it. But if it doesn't find one, too bad, and it's going to throw you an error. So you can add something to your path, but you can also just reference the full path to whatever it is you're trying to use. So, for example, let me open up my C drive. So go to, you know, your start and then my computer or you know, your directories. Now, my version of Python is hidden C, and then you've got, I've got 2.7 and 3.4, but ours is be 3.4. And then sure enough, there's Python. Now, to reference pip, pip is going to be in scripts. And then we'll come down here, and you can see these are applications. You can reference pip, pip 3.4, or pip 3. They basically are all going to do the same thing for you. But then you, so you could give the full path to this. So that's C, Python 34 scripts. So you would do like C colon slash Python 34. Actually, that needs to be a capital P, Python 34 scripts. And then pip, okay? Another thing that people might have a problem with is maybe figuring out where their Python installation is. Well, one thing that you can do to at least find where, say, your standard library is, is anytime you import a module, let's do, um, let's do import IO, that's a standard library. What you can do is you can print out the module and then dot underscore underscore file underscore underscore. Remember that we were talking about those methods. This is a version of that. Hit enter and it tells you what the path to at least Python is, so C colon slash 34. So on Windows, it's really easy to find it, but it's not necessarily as, as simple to find the path to your Python distribution on, especially like Linux or even Mac OS. So anyway, that is how to install modules with pip, and basically every module should be installable via pip. Now, before I leave you with that, sometimes pip just isn't going to work, especially if you're on a 64-bit version of Windows uh, with a 64-bit installation of Python. So just in case it's not working for you, this is a pretty popular repository of, basically, they used to be just pure binary .exe, but now they're all wheel files, but a lot of people don't know how to use wheel files. So... What you might do is, for example, let's say you wanted NumPy, I would just control F, search for NumPy, click on it, and then this gives you a bunch of wheels. And then, so this is basically NumPy, the version of NumPy, the version of Python, and then the bit version over here. So you would download this wheel, and then you would use pip to install the wheel in the directory that you downloaded it. So for example, I could download this one here to downloads, and then you would just reference the download folder, pip install, and then, you know, c colon slash users downloads, and then numpy 1.9.2.wheel. You know, reference that and install it that way. So that's how you can install modules. In the next section, we're going to be talking about how to interact with modules. Where are they and how can we learn more about them? So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.